Hello everyone, I'm Firefighter Hank Pensick from the Duggar Fire Department. And I'm Firefighter Jake Stern. And today we're standing here in front of our brand new fire truck. Unfortunately, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, we won't be able to come to your schools this year. So we hope you enjoy a small video that we put together to teach you guys about fire prevention in your classroom. Sparky's gonna help us so with stop, drop, and roll. So remember, if your clothes are on fire, you have to cover your eyes with your hands, you have to get down, and you have to roll, roll, roll until the fire is out. Until the fire gets out. Okay, look at that. Sparky did a great job. Can all you guys do that? Thank you, Sparky. Firefighter Jake here again with another safety tip. Smoke detectors. They're very important. Each one of us should have one in our bedrooms. With the help of our parents, we should be testing these once a month. They're very easy to test, especially with the help of an adult. Batteries are good. We do this once a month and we change the batteries every six months and a good reminder is to do it when we change our clocks back. Smoke detectors save lives. I hope that all of you have at least one of these in your bedrooms and in many of the rooms in your house. Some smoke detectors now have a very long life, upwards of 10 years. It's important that we have our parents check the dates on them because oftentimes they don't last as long as they should. They're relatively inexpensive, and through various programs, they can be provided for you. Along with the importance of smoke detectors, is the importance of having an emergency home escape plan, in case there were to have a fire in your home. They're very easily drawn, and I, I will include a still shot of this at the end of the video so that your teachers can help you and design one of your own with your family. Make sure to include where your smoke detectors are, your best route of escape from all bedrooms and all rooms in the house, and the most important is a safe meeting place for where you and your family will meet at the end. Oh no! The smoke detector. What do I do? Oh, roll out of bed. And I'll stay real, real low. And I'll go crawl to my door. When I get to the door, I'll feel with the back of my paw. Okay, it's cold, so I can peek. Okay, no smoke out here. I can go. Okay, the coast is clear. I'll keep crawling. Crawl, crawl, crawl. Stay low and go. Okay, now I've gotten to the stairs. So what I'll do is I'll go down on my bottom so that I stay safe. I don't want to fall and get hurt. Help, help, fireman, I'm up here. Help, help. Help, help, I'm trapped. Save me. Help, help. your step, I'm right behind you. Oh, you got two more steps. Or you're on the ground. Thank you, Mr. Fireman. All right, boys and girls. We have a helper here today, which is my friend, Firefighter Matt. Hi, dads. We're gonna go through why Firefighter Matt wears what he wears, so that you guys know that there's nothing to be afraid of, because he's just like me, myself, or Firefighter Hank, underneath all this gear. You can hear him if you listen really closely. Every time Firefighter Matt takes a deep breath, he breathes clean air through this mask that's on his face that comes off this fancy backpack that's on his back. Go ahead and take your air off. That alarm is part of the backpack that he wears called an air pack. And when Firefighter Matt, if he were to get hurt, he stops moving, that alarm that you might start to hear will start to go off so other firefighters know that he's in danger and he needs help. 
Firefighter Matt wears a special helmet so that if falling debris falls down, it doesn't hit him in the head or hurt him. It's got a special brim on the back so that hot water from putting fires out can roll right down his back and not burn him. You can go ahead and remove your helmet, Firefighter Matt. You can take off your mask as well. Firefighter Matt also wears heavy gloves so that he doesn't burn his hands in a fire or get cut on sharp objects such as glass. You'll also notice that Firefighter Matt carries a special radio so that we can all talk to each other in burning buildings. He also carries an extremely bright flashlight so that he can see in smoke-filled environments. All of Firefighter Matt's turnout here is fire retarded so that he can't get burned in a burning building. He also has these bright reflectors so that if another flashlight hits him, he can be seen. He also wears heavy leather boots with steel toes so that he doesn't get hurt stepping on sharp objects. Thank you, Firefighter Matt. It's hey, been a pleasure. Thank you. Oh look, there's a fireman coming down the hallway to help me. There's nothing to be afraid of. Sparky, I'm here for you, buddy. Mr. Fireman, help. I can't find my way out. I'm going to help you. Follow me, okay? Okay. Let's get out together. Over and out of me. Okay. Sparky again with another pointer. We had a fire alarm inside my house, and now I'm at my safe meeting place waiting for my family members. Because when there's a fire alarm, you never go back inside to get anything. I'll wait at my safe meeting place, and I'll call 911 from the neighbor's phone. All right, kids. If we ever need to call 911 in an emergency, some of the things that we need to know are our address, where we live, so we'll have a number and a street name. So, Sparky, myself, I live at 311 Eagle Street in Dunkirk, New York. You should also be able to give a description of what the emergency is. So, if I call 911, I would tell the fireman that my house is on fire. We should never call 911 as a prank if it's not a real emergency. Remember last year we talked about things that are hot and things that are not. So some things in our houses that we use all the time that are hot are stoves and pots when our parents are cooking. Things we shouldn't go near, lighters and matches. Those things can hurt us and they can start fires. And small fires become very big fires very quickly. If we are ever get to get burned on accident, what we do is we run our hand or wherever we're burned under cool water. That should make the burn feel better, and always tell a grown-up. So now that we've talked about the importance of smoke detectors, we know that they are very easy to test, and we should test them with our parents once every month. We should be changing our batteries every six months, or when we change our clocks back for daylight savings time. Generally, we should have one of these in every bedroom in our home, and in the common areas, such as our living room, and one on each floor. Sparky said in the video, matches and lighters are tools for adults. So we never ever play with matches and lighters. We see them, we get a parent or a guardian, we tell them to put them up. Remember the things that are hot and what's not. Pots, stoves, heaters are all hot. And remember what we do when we get burned. We run our, the area underneath cool water for up to 20 minutes. Once again, to talk about the importance of the 911 system. Things we need to know about calling 911 for a real emergency. We never do it for pranks. We never do it for fun with our friends. Because if we call 911 as a joke, we can get in serious trouble. Along with getting in serious trouble, as you could take away from someone who actually needs help. When we call 911, it's very simple, but we need to know three things. We dial on our phones, 911. We'll be connected with an operator. We need to be able to tell them what our address is. That's the number and our street name. 
Sparky lives at 311 Eagle Street in Dunkirk, New York. If you live in an apartment, you should also know what your apartment number is. It could be upper, lower, front, or rear, or it could have a number. Very simple things, but we call them for emergencies only. If we need a policeman, a fireman, or if we need medical help if someone gets hurt or they're sick. Remember the importance of an escape plan. Our goal when we have an emergency is to get to our safe meeting place. So when we hear the smoke detector and we're in bed, we roll out of bed, we get low, we go to the door, the back of our hand because it's much, much tougher than the palm. If we open the door and use it as a shield, we need to make sure that there's no smoke in the hallway. If there is smoke in the hallway, we go back to our window and we wait for the fireman. We'll yell for help from there, okay? If there is no smoke and we can get out, we want to go, go out and get to our safe meeting place as fast as possible and as safe as possible. When we call 911, we always want to do it once we're at our safe meeting place with our family members and we always use our neighbor's phone to call. We never go back inside for anything, not toys or pets. It's very important that we stick to those rules. Small fires can become big fires very, very quickly. We cannot stress that enough. If you follow these rules, you can be a fire safe kid. I want to thank you guys for taking this time to watch our video and bearing with us. Hopefully next year we can get back to our normal